Okay, so the notification that just went off in my pocket tells me we are online. And what a privilege it is to be back here with the contemporary service team to bring you the afternoon worship for today, which is a Sunday, believe it or not, um, and is, to be precise, the third Sunday of Easter. Um, although it doesn't feel like the third Sunday of Easter because I've run out of chocolate eggs in this house. Um, but you join us um, for a new format contemporary service. So if you have already downloaded the liturgy, uh, the order of service for, for this contemporary service, uh, you can turn that into bedding for a hamster because it is no longer needed. We are um, going to have a much more prayer led service um, with fewer things to read so we can really hopefully get immersed in worship. Today we are blessed to have Sue Bortwood leading the service so without any further ado, any further procrastinating from me, I am going to mute myself and hand over to Sue for this service. Good afternoon and welcome to our contemporary service, a service with not too many words. So we would like to bring you the fruits of the spirit which is going to be our sermon series this, this time. And um, remember, we like to ask you to put notes up or and prayer requests, which we'll try and include in the service towards the end. So if we're ready, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our opening song funnily enough, is called Holy Spirit. Thank you, Sam. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close Nothing can compare your our living hope Your presence I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the Your glory, God, is what I want 
fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, that's what we're here for. So to take us into that, Marie is going to lead us in prayer. It's going to be a little different to usual. Just ask that you sit comfortably. And if it helps, just close your eyes. And uh, Marie will lead us now in our prayers. Lord, we pray for your blessings on everyone gathered together for our act of worship, both now and for those who will worship with this service later. We pray for the work of your church in this parish. We pray for our ministry team at Greenstead and St Anne's, for their caring ministry and leadership. We pray for all churches in our town and within our country and all those you call to ministry. This weekend, Lord, we pray for the Queen and members of the royal family as they mourn the loss of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. We thank you for his life of service and all that he achieved in supporting other people and his work to protect the environment, your creation. We come before you, Lord, sorry for all the times we haven't behaved as we ought. By saying something we shouldn't. By acting in a manner that leaves us feeling uncomfortable about ourselves. For things where we have not done something where we should have. We take a quiet moment to reflect on the past week. We are sorry, Lord, and ask for your forgiveness. Strengthen us, Lord, so that we can be your servant in the week ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving generosity, for all the ways you care for us, that you are a central part of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for being with us every day in all that we do. We thank you for the gift of our homes and our families, for our church family. We thank you for opportunities to come together and worship you. We especially thank you for the gift of technology that keeps us connected. We thank you for answered prayers. We lift before you those lives where you have touched them, for those you have healed for those you continue to draw near to during times of trouble and your love and comfort to them. We thank you for the vaccine rollout and the protection it gives many people every day. Just lift anything else up to the Lord that you want to say thank you for in a quiet moment of prayer. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to enter into each one of us, to help us all in what we do, to comfort us during difficult times, to be our advocate. We ask your Holy Spirit to help us understand your word and equip us for your mission. May your spirit open our hearts and minds to be ever more aware of your presence in our lives, to seek you out and hear your word for us. And Lord, we pray that our hearts and minds are stilled so they are open to your word during this service. 
May you speak into our hearts, Lord, so we all understand your message for us. May we all strive to work harder to do your will, to serve you and those around us in our community. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Amen, amen indeed. Thank you, Marie, for those thoughtful and prayerful prayers. And now while we are still in our prayerful mode, we're going to have two worship songs. The first is called Egypt and the other is called Spirit Break Out. So if you're ready for some worship, here we go.
often come down Wow Spirit come down and break out and now we come to our readings, which Sam's going to bring us, and a sermon. So we just ask, Lord, that you bless, bless Sam as he brings a sermon to us. So, after your worship, are you comfy again? Okay, over to Sam. Thank you very much, Sue. Just before we hear this reading, I just wanted to echo the words of that last worship song again. Spirit, break out, break our walls down. And Lord, I pray you will break down the walls of our preconceptions before we hear this reading from your holy word. Break down what we think we know and let us accept what you are trying to teach us through it. Amen. Our reading today um, comes from the book of John and it is chapter 14 and it's verses 15 to 17. It's called the promise of the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I, I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. That was how the New Revised Standard Version has that reading. There is a variation in uh, the word on the street um, which says this. If you love me, you'll live as I tell you to live. And I'll ask dad, to send you a new advisor, his Holy Spirit, and he'll be contracted to you permanently. May I speak truly in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So you join us at the start of a new sermon series, a time of excitement, a time of panic for my team who I normally throw things at last minute to get ready as we come to a new topic and a new structure. But I had a look at this series, The Fruits of the Spirit, and it is powerful, it is necessary, um, it is equipping. But before we got into that, I thought um, we might want an introduction session to the Holy Spirit. Um, Non-Christians and Christians alike can often get confused by this concept. Um, so I thought, let's have an introduction to the Holy Spirit before we get into the fruits. Now, in today's reading from the Gospel of John, we heard Jesus's, Jesus promising the gift of the Holy Spirit. And um, in a few weeks, churches all over the world will celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. This was the time, a lot of you may be familiar with the story, this is the time that the Holy Spirit came to the apostles and um, empowered them and equipped them to spread the gospel, um, not just to new people, but in new languages, in new places. Um, and the rest of this series, we'll be looking at, as I said, the fruits of the Spirit, so the, the joys and characteristics that the Holy Spirit brings. But First of all, that burning question, who or what is the Holy Spirit? And maybe more importantly, how can we encounter the Holy Spirit today? You see, we as Christians, we believe that the Holy, Tr that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. God's presence here on earth. In fact, it, even before Pentecost, even before we sung about the Holy Spirit, even before the creation of the earth was complete, even before let there be light, the Holy Spirit was here, hovering over dark and disordered waters. If you flick to the very first page of the Bible, you'll read this. 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So it is not, the Holy Spirit was not concocted and sent down purely for Pentecost and for the emerging church. The Holy Spirit was there in creation with the Father and the Son. Now, through my conversations with people inside and outside of the church, the subject of the Holy Spirit has brought around a few things. Arguments, for sure. Misunderstanding, definitely. And a whole heap of confusion. The Father, okay, we can grasp that. The Son, yeah, okay, New Testament accounts for the Son. God incarnate in human form, we can make sense of that. The Holy Spirit, yeah, that can be a bit tougher. You are not alone if you find that difficult. Often the subject can be skipped over, but as a part of the God we worship, it is so vital to our faith. If you look online for varying viewpoints, uh, you may come across a person called Parley Pratt. Parley Pratt was a key figure in Mormonism. And he will tell you that the Holy Spirit is merely a force, a force a bit like electricity or magnetism, simply a ripple of God's power. Non-personal, non-separate, non-divine, but let me tell you for the most part that is nonsensical. Do you see what I did there? If you ask me, um, we can easily debunk this theory just by looking at the works of the Holy Spirit. If we look in our Bibles, uh, in the book of John chapters 14 to 16, there are several things we find the Holy Spirit doing. The Holy Spirit can be found teaching, bearing witness, convicting, guiding, and speaking. And I think we can all agree, I hope we can all agree, that these are not actions that we normally see electricity perform. More so later on um, in the book of Acts, in fact, we read this line. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Now, if instead we were to say, do you know what? It seemed good to the electricity and to us. It doesn't really make sense. It is clear from these actions we see of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit is a much more personal being than any scientific force by comparison. Again, the personhood of the Holy Spirit is shown at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. There's a very famous quote from Jesus that we know as the Great Commission. Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. You see, here it is not up for debate. Jesus makes it clear that not only is the Holy Spirit wholly personal and worthy to be named, but also that the Holy Spirit is not under the Father or the Son, but is equal to and to be held in the same esteem. You see, however, while I was busy arguing with Parley Pratt, convincing myself that my theology is much more sound and I was right, I came to agree partly with something he said. Not that he meant to say, but I was looking at actually the notable similarities between the Holy Spirit and electricity. You see, I found that like electricity, the Holy Spirit is in need of suitable instruments or conductors, if you will. You see, if you want to experience the power of electricity, you can take a large metal pole to the top of a building or skyscraper during a thunderstorm and wave it about. Sooner or later, you'll know exactly what electricity is all about. 
I feel the need to say at this point, please don't take that as a recommendation. Don't do that. I would hate to have that on my conscience. But in a similar way to this, to encounter the Holy Spirit, we need to make ourselves conductors. We need to make ourselves instruments that are ready to accept and to pass on the power of the Spirit. We need to make sure we have made room to welcome the Holy Spirit into. And finally, most importantly, a bit like flicking a switch, we need to invite the Holy Spirit in. We need to be searching for him. Unfortunately, as many times as I have prayed for it, the Holy Spirit won't suddenly appear in tangible form behind a skeptic in the queue at Waitrose or something and uh, hand over a business card and say, you're right, mate, I'm the Holy Spirit. Here's a list of what I can do for you. It would be entertaining if that happened. It would certainly liven up my shopping trips. Um, but it is not the case. Instead, it is when we start searching for the Spirit and making space for him to move in our lives that we can begin to witness the awesome power of the Spirit. I'd like to take a minute here just so that we can reflect and ask ourselves this question. When was the last time that you expectantly prayed the Holy Spirit into your situation, into your weakness or to share in your joy? When was the last time that in that moment of reaction, you prayed, come Holy Spirit? Many of us who have been Christians uh, for some time ha may have welcomed the Holy Spirit into our lives. We may have encountered the Spirit in so many ways. We may have witnessed the power of the Spirit during our journeys. But the thing is, it's not a door that will stay open without care. We need to continually renew the invitation to the Spirit. So next time you come to prayer, next time you're in the heat of the moment, remember this point. Renew that invitation. Come, Holy Spirit. We need to remember that invitation that we are going to send. And it is beautifully illustrated in the song that we opened with today. We'll be opening with that song throughout the series just to remind ourselves to invite that encounter. The words say this, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. You see, and that is the invitation. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. So let us go forth and be conductors. Make space for the Holy Spirit in our lives and continually, faithfully and expectantly invite the Holy Spirit into our situations and the lives of all those we care about. Faith may not be discovered through shouting Bible verses at people in the street. Faith may not be found in the historical evidence of the accuracy of the Bible. But whatever our situation or background, real encounter with the Holy Spirit is so powerful, so undeniable and so beyond our explanations or descriptions that the only way to explore and understand it is through faith and the journey that it brings. So let's be conductors. Let's invite the Holy Spirit in. Let's make sure we pray for encounter, to see the works of the Spirit, to feel the presence of the Spirit in our lives and pray for encounter in the lives of others. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Amen. Wow, thank you, Sam. Indeed, Holy Spirit, you are very welcome here. And while we reflect on Sam's words, and while we invite the Holy Spirit to come now and fill us anew, 
we listen to a, the words that we believe in a creedal song. That's a song that just says, this is what we believe. This is what we think about. So the song is This I Believe. Thank you, Sam. Our Father everlasting, the old creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, Conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. And to sort of wind up our service for this evening, we're just going to pray again. So if you sit comfortably, and sometimes when you're asking for the Holy Spirit to come, it just helps if you spread your hands out 
and just relax. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the promise of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, break into our hearts and break the coldness and help us to be the people that you made and that you want us to be. Break into our lives with power, with healing and with love. May all that we've heard and all that we've sung stay with us. May we reflect on these as we go about this week. And we ask this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. And because we're the good old C of E, we remain in a prayerful position, but we have to have something called the collect, which is the prayer or special prayer for today. And after that, we'll say the Lord's Prayer. Now, I'm going to use the modern version, but as I can't hear you, that's fine. You can say whichever version you prefer, and God loves them all. So the collect for today. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, Give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we might be strengthened and sustained by this risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we collect our thoughts and we use the prayer that Jesus gave us, which just about sums up our every need. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And to round up, up, we're going to have a song called God of Revival. But I think before that, Sam might have some notices for us. Can't have a service without notices, Sam. The notices, the notices, the notices. Um, so normally, um, being the second service of a Sunday, I will have had Sue's, Sue, uh, Reverend Sue's comprehensive list of notices to sort of bat off of in the afternoon service. However, today I am on my own swimming in notices to try and remember. Um, we resume somewhat of a familiar pattern of worship this week. Um, for those involved, Tuesday morning we'll have our small team meeting and morning prayer. Um, and we will have, um, we also have a PCC meeting on Tuesday. Um, those of you who are involved have hopefully remembered. I'm sure those who are not involved just got very excited and are very, very jealous of what they may be missing out on in this exclusive members club of the PCC. But that is happening on Tuesday. Um, on Thursday, we have our morning prayer live on Facebook. Um, Friday, we will have our night prayer at 6 p.m. And then before you know it, it'll be Sunday again. And at 10.30 a.m., we'll have a live streamed Holy Communion from St. Matthew's. Um, and that will complete our first full cycle of, uh, of leading services from our buildings since we have gone back in. 
a bit of a whistle stop tour, but that is what to expect this week. Um, the contemporary services are now back to a regular fortnightly uh, pattern, so there won't be one next week. Um, you have a full two weeks to reflect on this service and uh, see what it means for you before we go into session two. Other than that, um, the, in the description for this service, there is our, a link to our GoFundMe page, uh, which is just where if you feel called to or are able to give um, a donation towards the ongoing work of the church, then that is where you can do it. Just click the link um, and it is very straightforward. It's always easy when it's giving the money away, isn't it? It's when you're trying to get it back from places. That's when the process is difficult. But just click the link and that is where you can give if you are in a position to do so, if you feel that you're being prompted in such a way. That, I think, concludes the notices. So to recover from that list that I have just thrown at you at 100 miles an hour, we are going to have this song called God of Revival.
Mm, indeed, Lord, pour it out. Pour out your spirit, Lord, and revive us all. Well, we've come to the end of our new look service. I've um, put the notices in the wrong place, but only Sam would probably notice, but never mind. Sorry, Sam. So we've already had the notices. So I'm going to leave you. Um, I'm going to say the grace, which is another set prayer that some of you may know, some of you may not. And um, then I'm going to ask you to go in peace to serve the Lord. And you're going to reply in the name of Christ. Amen. And then we decided just because we've changed everything, we're going to keep one thing the same. We're going to have our favourite song at the end. We're going to ask God to pour out his blessings. And that's the song we're going to finish with. So let's just pray the grace together. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we hope this time's been good for you. If it hasn't, do get in touch. We'd love to chat with you. If it has, do get in touch. We'd love to chat with you. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So now go into the rest of the week. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Name of Christ. Amen. Amen. And our favourite song. Thank you, Sam, the blessing. <laughs>